بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على علي ابن موسى الرضا المرتضى Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Our warmest salams to all of our brothers and sisters wherever it is in this world that you are hearing our voice. We are speaking to you from the Holy Shrine of Imam Ali ibn Musa Rad al Murtada in the Holy City of Mashhad, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, these programs are prepared um, for the 10 days of Kirama, which start on the first day of Dil Qa'ada, equivalent to the 4th of August, and which uh, will continue until the 11th of Dil Qa'ada and the 14th of August. Uh, the first of the Qa'ada is the birthday anniversary of Lady Fatima al Masuma, and the 11th is the birthday of Imam Ali ibn Musa Rad al Murtada. Alayhi salam. We hope that inshallah we will take a small step into familiarizing further our dear audience with the teachings of these valuable people. Um, I'm Fatima Shamali, your host for today, and inshallah. Together with Dr. Abbas Ali Shamali, my father and the expert of this program, we are going to present to you this discussion. Dr. Shamali, salamun alaikum and thank you so much for joining us. Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. So happy to be at the shrine of Imam Ali ibn Musarrada to provide our sisters and brothers in faith a piece of Imam's teaching for using in their daily life. Um, for those of our viewers who are just watching today's program, I would like to introduce Dr. Shamali that he holds an MA in Developmental Psychology and a PhD in Culture and Values in Education from McGill University, Canada. So in the previous program, we ended with uh, this hadith that uh, is from Imam Musa al-Qadim uh, that he had said during his circumambulation around Kaaba, during specifically the Sa'i of Safa and Marwa, he says that, oh Allah, uh, enable me to have a good view towards you and that when I say oh Allah I, I do tawakkul on you oh Allah I rely on you I truly mean it I sincerely do tawakkul on Allah so today Dr. Shamali I would like to start the program with a little bit more shedding light on this hadith and then inshallah I have some more questions that I'm ready to ask thank you you know uh, life satisfaction is one of the missing point in, for daily life of all humanity whether religious or irreligious, secular or faithful. Life satisfaction is a yes. missing point. So wherever you go, the people are striving to come up with the fact that they are happy in their life. Before I go to the explanation of hadith, I would like to tell the audience or the viewers that when you say life satisfaction, what do you mean by that? There are dimensions, aspects, when you, when you talk about life satisfaction. Who is satisfied with the life? Mm -hmm. What are the requirements for life satisfaction? There are some elements, some factors. Number one, you're satisfied with your life, if your life is meaningful, is not meaningless, is not empty. Mm -hmm. So number one, meaningful. Meaningful is so important that even the mystics, when they, when they talk about spiritual journey, they call it ma'nawiyya, spirituality. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about ma'nawi and spirituality, they say, your life should be meaningful. Yeah. Comes from ma'na, spirit. It's really interesting. I just wanted to add something in a parenthesis here. Um, <clears throat> we see in a lot of like advanced countries, a lot of countries with very high welfare, that the rate of committing suicide is so high. So, like, if we want to look at the materialistic um, elements of happiness, those people all have it. They never strive poverty. Fully. If they get sick, they're taken care of in the hospitals. They never have really um, life-threatening um, natural disasters or anything like that, you know, but yet they commit suicide. Whereas we see that in some poorer countries, people are living 
much, much happier, even though they're no, so poor, maybe sometimes. they don't, they even sleep hungry at night. But so we understand that for a human being, though, although we are made of um, blood and flesh, but the most important thing for us in order able to have a goal in life and to be happy is not to eat well and wear well, you know, it's to have a meaningful life, to think about what's the end of my life, why am I here, what am I going to do, where am I going to go. For what, for what target are you living? Yeah. So meaning means having purpose, yeah. being targetful. This is so important, number one. Number two, you are satisfied with your life if you feel successful. Mm -hmm. So the second factor for your life satisfaction is what? Is success. To meet, to come up with what you have planned. To reach your goal. To reach your goal. So, meaning, success, and you are satisfied if you enjoy. If you are frustrated. If you are deprived, are you satisfied with your life? Satisfaction comes when, when you are pleasant, when you enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, meaning, success, and joy. These come to the fourth element, and that is happiness. So, you are satisfied with your life if you are happy. With, if you're happy with yourself, your family, your wife, your children, your, your job, your education, whatever. So, whenever you talk about life satisfaction, you have to bring these all elements in, into your mind, in, in, into your consideration. So, the first uh, element of life satisfaction is having a goal or meaningfulness. The second one is reaching a goal or to, to actually succeed Success. in reaching that goal. Third one is joy and the fourth one, the fourth one is happiness, which is the result of the top three. I just didn't get the number three, joy. So you have a goal, you reach the goal, and then... So are these like the stages of life satisfaction? You have a goal, you reach the goal, then you are... You, you, enjoy you have joy, it, you enjoy and it, you're happy. and then you're happy, right? So, and... When you are happy enough to enjoy the tools and the, and the appliances, this is another requirement for your life satisfaction. You have planning, you have goal, you have meaning, but you don't have the necessary appliances. Mm -hmm. Like for, what? Like, like shelter, like meal, like dress, like what you live with, yeah. that you call it sustenance. The basic human needs. The, the basic needs, both biological and psychological. Mm -hmm. So these are, when you are talking about life satisfaction, uh, you know, people are divided into two main groups. Secular people who do not believe in any religion, religion, who are not religious, who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or when you talk about secularity, it does not necessarily mean that they don't believe in Allah. They marginalize religion into the corner of individual personal aspect of mind. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful not to make mistake here. When you say secular, it has two meanings. Number one, irreligious people, atheists, those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are, can, could be considered as secular. Sometimes they are not irreligious, they are not atheists. They are the people who believe that religion could do nothing with our social aspects of life. Mm -hmm. It's due to individual personal aspect. So when you talk about uh, life satisfaction, someone asks you, for what, which group, what type of people are you talking? Religious or irreligious? For ir irreligious people also could be a, you know, good meaning of life satisfaction because 
they have their own meaning, their own target, their own, own joy, values, whatever. But for religious people, when you talk about life satisfaction, it is related to Islamic worldview. If, if you talk as a Muslim, if you talk as a Christian or Jew, Jewish, that, that's a different story. But in Islam, uh, it goes back to your Islamic worldview and Islamic value system. Islamic value system, you, you talk about vices and virtues. Vices, fada'il and rada'il, vices mm -hmm. and virtues. And belief system means uh, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prophethood, imamit, uh, the holy justice, and also the day of resurrection. So Imam Musa ibn Ja'far says the very base in your belief system is to have a positive look, positive outlook and pleasant look and honest reliability. Fatima, these are very important. In one single saying of Imam Al-Kadim number one, positive and pleasant look to the Lordship of Allah. Can you say the text of the Arabic hadith? Yes. And the second is honest reliability and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A guy says, I was behind Imam Abil Hassan Musa ibn Ja'far al safa or al marwa He was just doing the sa'i between these two. And huwa la yazidu ala harfan. He wouldn't add anything. He wouldn't utter anything except two words. Just two words. Number one, Allahumma inni as'aluka husna al-dhanna bik. Oh Allah, I'm asking that to give me a positive look that you are my Lord, you are kind to me, you are my creator, you created me here to come up with perfection, to be your perfect human being. This is number one. And second, صدق النية في التوكل عليه. Unfortunately, lots of the time we talk about tawakkul, yeah. but we just say, say it by <laughs> words. We don't mean it. We don't show it in, in our practices and daily life. So husnan niya fitawakul. And it's it's not easy job. Lots of us, even even the faithful, very faithful, dedicated people, when they say tawakul, they don't mean it. You know, their real life is due to, you know, money, position, whatever. So I'm i I'm confused here. You said that uh, life satisfaction is different for a believer and a disbeliever. But we believe that according to the verse of the Quran, every fitrat Allah alladhi fatra nasa alayha, Allah created everybody based on one fitra, based on one nature. So how is it that our satisfaction in life is going to be different if we're a believer or if we're non-believer? Because fitra is not actualized. Fitra is a capital that you are born with, uh, with uh, like a potentiality. Mm -hmm. If it is actualized, if it is realized by the prophetic education, by religious education and teaching, it will be active in you. But that fitra if is, is in untouched or wrongly realized, then you don't believe and you don't think and you don't realize that your satisfaction rely and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lordship. Okay. So we just have a couple of more minutes till yeah. the end of the program. I would like to, with your permission, have a wrap up of what we talked about today. Just I add one point and you wrap. Go ahead. Imam Sadiq said, if you are a true believer, you need to realize, you need to accept, you need to believe that whatever circumstances, whatever events that happens in your life is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your goodness. Mm -hmm. Even when you are sick, even when you go under surgery, even when you, are, when you go under poverty, believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to you know, torture you, does not to reject you, does not want to reject you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your creator. And always, always you are saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He's the compassionate, the beneficent. So what? 
Imam Sadiq, whatever happens to the believer is on his or her goodness. Easy or difficult, sickness or health. That's it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, today we talked about how um, we will only reach uh, satisfaction if we fulfill the two following um, prerequisites, I, I can say like this. Requirements. Requirements, yeah. So first of all, <clears throat> so first of all, we need to have a good view towards Allah. And second of all, we have to sincerely rely on Him. And uh, I hope that we can practice this dhikr and repeatedly say it in our da daily lives. Allahumma inni as'aluka husna dhani bik wa sidqa niyyati fi tawakkuli alayk. Um, this is the Arabic um, text of what mm, the, the um, dhikr that I just told you. So, if we want to have satisfaction in our life, we have to have we have to have a goal, which is that our life has to be meaningful. Two, if we want to, um, our life has to be meaningful. Two, we have to be able to reach that goal or to have success. Three, we have to be able to enjoy that success so that we could have joy in our life and four if we have joy in our life we will actually reach happiness um, and we also said that the uh, the standard of happiness or life satisfaction in the life of believers and non-believers is different uh, because in the life of non-believers it is based on their values it doesn't mean that non-believers do not enjoy happiness they have their own value system and in the life of the believers it's dependent on the ver vices and virtues or their belief system. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank you very much, dear listeners, for uh, being with us until now, for following our program. We hope that uh, this discussion was inshallah beneficial. We hope that we will truly be able to practice, at least in these 10 days, to have a good view, a positive view towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to sincerely do tawakkul on Him. Until another program, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.